First Litany Virgo Dulces by Eric McKay Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson O thou refulgent essence of all grace, O thou that with the witchery of thy face Hast made of me thy servant unto death, I pray thee pause, ere musical of breath, And rapt of utterance, thou condemn indeed My venturous wooing, and the wanton speed With which I greet thee, dear and tender soul, From out the fullness of my passion creed. I am so truly thine that never more Shall man be found this side the Stygian shore, So meek as I, so patient under blame and yet withal so minded to proclaim his lifelong ardor for my theme is just my heart enslaved a smile a broken trust a soft mirage a glimpse of fairyland and then the wreck thereof in tears and dust thou wast not made for murder yet a glance may murderous brew and beauty may entrance more than a siren's or a serpent's eye and there are moments when a smothered sigh may hint a comfort and a murmured no give signs of yes and misery's overflow make tears more precious than we care to tell though one by one our hopes we must forego i should have shunned thee as a man may shun his evil hour i should have cursed the sun that made the day so bright and earth so fair when first we met delirium through the air burning like fire I should have cursed the moon and all the stars that dreamlike in a swoon shut out the day, the loved, the lovely day that came too late and left us all too soon. I looked at thee, and lo, from face to feet I saw my tyrant, and I felt the beat of my quick pulse. I knew thee for a queen, and bowed submissive, and the smile serene of thy sweet face revealed the soul of thee. For I was wounded, as a man may be, whom Eros tricks with words he will not prove, and all my peace of mind went out from me. Oh, why didst cheer me with the thought of bliss, and wouldst not pay me back my luckless kiss? I sought thy side, I gave thee of my store one wild salute. A flame was at the core of that first kiss, and on my mouth I feel the glow thereof the pressure and the seal, as if thy nature, when the deed was done, had leapt to mine in lightning-like appeal. If debts were paid in full, I might require more than my kiss. I might in time aspire to some new bond, or reenact the first. For once thou knowest the love for which I thirst, the love for which I hungered in thy sight was not withheld. I deemed thee day and night mine own true mate, and sent thee token flowers to figure forth the hopes I'd fain indite. Is this not so? Canst thou detend in truth the sun-like smile with which in flush of youth thou didst accept my greeting, though so late? My love-lorn homage, when the voice of fate fell from thy lips and made me twice a man, because half thine, in that betrothal plan, whereof I spake, not knowing how twould be when May had marred the prospects it began. Canst thou deny that early in the spring, when daisies drooped and birds were fain to sing, we met and talked and walked and were content in sunlit paths? An hour and more we spent in Keats Grove. We lingered near the stem of that lone tree on which was seen the gem of his bright name, there carven by himself. And then I stooped and kissed thy garment's hem. I gave thee all my life. I gave thee there in that wild hour the great creator's share of mine existence. And I turned to thee as men to idols, madly on my knee. And then, uplifted by those arms of thine, I sat beside thee warmed with other wine than vintage balm. And mindful of thy blush, I guessed a thought which words will not define i told thee stories of the days of joy when earth was young and love without alloy made all things glad and all the thoughts of things and like a man who wonders when he sings and knows not whence the power that in him lies i made a madrigal of all my sighs 
and bade thee heed them and i join therewith the texts of these my follies that i prize i spoke of men long dead who wooed in vain and yet were happy men whose tender pain was fraught with fervour as the night with stars and then i spoke of heroes battle scars and lordly souls who rode from land to land to win the love touch of a lady's hand and on the strings of thy low murmuring lute i struck the chords that all men understand i sang to thee i praise thee with my praise e'en as a bird concealed in sylvan ways may laud the rose and wish from hour to hour that he had petals like the empress flower and there could grow unwinged and be a bud with all his warblings taken at singing flood and turned to vagaries of the wild ascent to undermine the meekness of her blood ah those were days that april should have been my last on earth and ere the frondage green had changed to gold i should have joined the ranks of dull dead men who lived for little thanks and made the most thereof though penance bound i should have known that in the daily round of mine existence there are griefs to spare but joys alas too few on any ground and there i stand to-day with bended head my task undone my garden overspread with baneful weeds am i the lord thereof or mine own slave without the power to doff my misery's badge am i so weak withal that i must loiter though the bugle's call shrills o'er the moor the far-off weltering moor where full men meet to vanquish or to fall am i so blurred in soul so out of health that i must turn to thee as if by stealth and fear thy censure fear thy quick rebuff and thou so gentle in a world so rough that god's high priest the morn apparelled sun ne'er saw thy light am i indeed undone of life and love and all and must i weep for joys that quit me and for sands that run to-morrow's dawn will break but yesterday where is its light and where the breezes play that swayed the flowers a bird will sing again but not so well the wind upon the plain the wintry wind will toss the groaning trees but i what comfort shall i have of these to know that they unloved have lost the spring as i thy favour and my power to please i should have learnt a lesson from the songs of woodland birds discoursing on the wrongs of madcap moths and bachelor butterflies i should have caught the cadence of the sighs of unwed flowers and learnt the way to woo which all things know but i beneath the blue of heaven's great dome for undesired of thee i have but jarred the notes that seemed so true i should have told thee all i meant to tell and how at lamas tide a wedding bell rang through my sleep mine own as well as thine and how i led thee smiling to a shrine and there endowed thee with the name i bear and how i woke to find the morning air flooded with light i should have told thee this and not concealed the theme of my long prayer but i was timid oh my love was such i scarce could name it trembling over much with too much ardour i was moved at length to mere mad utterance in a blameful strength i seized thy hand to scare thee as if old dryads were scared and calm and icy cold thine answer came i pray thee vex me not and all that day was winter on the wold End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Second Litany Vox Amoris by Eric McKay. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Vouchsafe, my lady, by the passion flower, and by the glamour of a moonlit hour and by the cries and sighs of all the birds that sing o nights to heed again the words of my poor pleading for i swear to thee 
my love is deeper than the bounding sea and more conclusive than a wedding bell and freer voiced than winds upon the lea in all the world from east unto the west there is no vantage ground and little rest and no content for me from dawn to dark from set of sun to song time of the lark and yet withal there is no man alive who for a goodly cause to make it thrive would do such deeds as i would gird me to could i but win the pearl for which i die it is thy love which downward in the deep of far-off visions i behold in sleep it is thy pearl of love which in the night doth tempt my soul to hopes i dare not write it is this gem for which had i a crown i'd barter peace and pomp an ermined gown it is thy troth thou paragon of maids for which i'd sell the joys of all renown i would attack a panther in its den to do thee service as thy man of men or front the fates or like a ghoul confer with staring ghost outside a sepulchre i would forego a limb to give thee life or yield my soul itself in any strife in any coil of doubt in any spot when death and danger meet as man and wife it is my solace all my nights and days to pray for thee and dote on thee always and evermore to count myself a king because i earned thy favour in the spring oh smile on me and call me to thy side and i will kneel to thee as to a bride and yet adore thee as a saint in heaven by god ordained by good men glorified i will acquaint thee with mine inmost thought and teach thee all i know though unbesought and make thee prouder of a poet's dream than wealthy men are proud of what they seem if thou have trust therein if thou require service of me or song or penance dire i will obey thee as thy belted knight or die to satisfy thy heart's desire ah thou hast that in store which none can give none but thyself and i am fain to live to watch the outcome of so fair a gift to see the bright good morrow loom and lift and know that thou unpeered beneath the moon untamed of men untutored to the tune of lip with lip wilt cease thy coy disdain and learn the languors of the loves of june all that i am and all i hope to be is thine till death and though i die for thee each day i live and though i throb and thrill at thoughts that seem to burn me and to chill in my dark hours i revel in the same yet i am free of hope as thou of blame and all around me wakeful and in sleep i weave a blessing for thy soul to claim o oh, by thy radiant hair and by the glow of thy full eyes and by thy breast of snow and by the buds thereof that have the flush of infant roses when they strive to blush and by thy voice melodious as a bell that rings for prayer in god's high citadel by all these things and more than i can urge i charge thee sweet to let me out of hell is it not hell to live so far away and not to touch thee not by night or day to be partaker of one smile of thine or one commingling of thy breath and mine or one encounter of thine amorous mouth i dwell apart from thee as north from south as east from western ways i dwell apart and taste the tears that quench not any drought why wouldst thou take the memory of a wrong to be thy shadow all the summer long a thing to chide thee at the dead of night 
a thing to wake thee with the morning light for self upbraiding while the wanton bird invests the welkin ah by joy deferred by peace withheld from me do thou relent and dower my life to-day with one love word wouldst thou cassandra wise oppress my soul with more unrest and he be like the bowl of festal comfort for a moment raise to my poor lips and then avert thy gaze wouldst make me mad beyond the daily curse of thy displeasure and in wrath disperse that halcyon draught that nectar of the mind which is the theme i yearn to in my verse oh by thy pity when so slight a thing as some small bird is wounded in the wing avert thy scorn and grant me from afar at least the right to love thee as a star the right to turn to thee the right to bow to thy pure name and evermore as now to own thy thraldom and to sing thereon in proud allegiance to mine earliest vow it were abuse of power to frown again when all day long i gloat upon the pain of pent-up hope my joy and my distress while the remembrance of a mute caress given to a rose a rose i pluck for thee seems as the withering of the world to me because i am unloved of thee to-day and undesired seaweeds in the sea i'll not believe that eyes so bright as thine were meant for malice in the summer shine or that a glance thereof though changed to fire could injure one whose spirit like a lyre has throbbed to music of remembered joys the pride thereof and all the tender poise of trust with trust the symphonies of grief made all mine own and faith which never cloys how can it be that one so fair as thou should wear contention on a whiter brow than may day dian's in her hunting gear i'll not believe that eye so wholly clear and mouth so constant to its morning prayer could mock the mischief of a man's despair in all the misery of a moment's hope seen far away as mist are seen in air how can a woman's heart be made of stone and she not know it mine is overthrown i have no heart to-day no perfect one only a thing that sighs at set of sun and beats its cage as if the thrall thereof were freedom's prison or the tomb of love as if god help me there were shame and truth and no salvation left in realms above i once could laugh i once was deemed a man fit for the frenzies of the dead god pan and now by heaven the birds that sing so well move me to tears in all the leafy dell in all the sundown glories of the west and all the moorland which the moon has blessed make me a dreamer i a coward too in all the weird expanse of mine unrest it is my curse to see thee and to learn that i must shun thee though i blaze and burn with all this longing all this fierce delight fear fraught and famished for a suitor's right a right conceded for a moment's space and then withdrawn as amorous face to face i dared to clasp thee and to urge a troth too sovereign sweet for one of adam's race i am a doom entangled mirthless soul without the power to rid me of the dole which day by day and nightly evermore corrodes my peace oh smile as once before at each wild thought in each discarded plea and let thy sentence let thy sufferance be that i be reckoned till the day i die the sad-eyed singer of thy fame and thee end a poem this recording 
is in the public domain. Third Litany Ad Te Flammati by Eric McKay Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Again, O oh love, again I make lament, and ere blight I pitch my summer tent outside the gateways of the Lord of Song, I weep and wait, contented all day long, to be the proud possessor of grief. It comforts me, it gives me more relief than pleasures give and spirit-like in air it reinvokes the peace that was so brief it speaks of thee it keeps me from the lake which else might tempt me and for thy sweet sake i shun all evil i am calmer now than when i wooed thee calmer than the vow which made me thine and yet so fond withal i start and tremble at the wind's footfall is it the wind or is it mine own past come back to life to lure me to its thrall? I long to rise and seek thee where thou art, and draw thee amorous to my wakeful heart that beats for thee alone, in vague unrest. I long to front thee when thou art lily dressed in white attire, e'en like the flowers of old that Jesus praised. And though the thought be bold, I am fain to kiss thee, sweetheart through thy hair and hide my face a while in all that gold i will not say what more might then be done and how by moonlight or beneath the sun we might be happy in a reckless mood i've talked of this and dreams in many a brood of tongue-tied fancies have my soul beset i will not hint at fealty or the fret of lips untrue or anger thee therein or call to mind one word thou wouldst forget. I should withhold my raptures where I wise, I should not vex thee with my many sighs, or claim one tear from thee, though tis my due. I should be silent, I should cease to sue. Sorrow should teach me what I failed to learn in days gone by, and crossed at every turn by some new doubt, new born of my desires, I should suppress the pangs with which I burn. I am outcast from the land of love, and thou, the queen thereof, as white as dove, new sped from heaven, and fine and fair to see as coy Queen Mab, when out upon the lee she met her master and was loved of him. Thou art allied to long-haired cherubim. And I, as something undesired of these, with woesome lips and eyes forever dim. I was ordained thy minstrel, but alas, I dare not greet thee when I see thee pass. I scarce indeed may hope at any time to work my will or triumph in a rhyme to do thee honor. No, nor make amends for unsought fervor in the tangled ends of my despair. How sad, how dark to me, all things have grown since thou and I were friends. It is the fault of thy despotic glance. It is the memory of a day's romance, when true to thee, though taunted for my truth, I dared to solemnize the joys of youth in one wild chant. It is thy fault, I say, thy piteous fault that on the verge of May I lost the right to live, as heretofore untouched by doubt from day to brightening day. O oh, summer's pride, I love thee from the first, and like a martyr I was blessed and cursed, and saved and slain and crowned and made anew, a grief-glad man with yearnings not a few, but no just hope to win so fair a troth. I should have known how one may weep for both, when lovers part, poor souls beneath the moon, and how remembrance may outlive an oath. The nymphs, I think, were like thee in the glade of that Greek valley where the wine was made for feasts of Bacchus. For I dream at night of those creations, kind and calm and bright, and in my thought, unhallowed though it be, the sun-born muses turn their gaze on me and seem to know me as friend of theirs, though all unfit to serve them on my knee. They lived and sang. They died as visions die, supreme, eternal offshoots of the sky, made and remade, undraped and draped afresh, 
to glad the earth like phantoms made of flesh and yet as mist-like as delusions are they stood beside achilles in his car they knew the gods and all their joysome deeds and all the chants that sprang from star to star the myths of greece the maidens of the grove the dear dead fancies of the days of jove why were they banned oh why in reason's name were they abolished they were good to claim and good to dream of and to crown with bays far seen of men far shining in the haze of withering doubts they were the world's elect as thou art mine to bow to and to praise night after night i see thee in my dreams as fair as daphne with the morning beams of thy bright locks about thee like a cloak fair as the young aurora when she woke at phaeton's call athwart the mountain heights i see thee radiant in the summer nights and bosom packed with frenzies unpressed i thrill to thee in slumber's soft delights i see thee pout i see thee in disdain look out reluctant through the falling rain of thy long hair i feel thee close at hand i note thy breathing as i loose the band that binds thy waist and then to waking life i backward start despair is sorrow's wife and i am sorrow and despair's mine own to lure me on to madness or to strife my sex offends thee or the thought of this for i did fright thee when i flecked a kiss with too much heat i should have bowed to thee and left unsaid the word deception free which like a flash illumed the love within my wilfulness was much to blame therein but thou wilt shrive me sweet of mine offence if passion pangs be deemed so dark a sin oh give me back my soul that with the same i may achieve a deed of poet fame or die belauded on the battlefield there's much to seek my hand is strong to wield weapon or pen if thou consent thereto deeds may be done if not thine eyes are blue and heaven is there a twofold tender shrine whose wrath i fear whose judgment still i rue i am but half myself the life in me is nigh crushed out and though i seem to see glory and grace and joy as in the past they are but shadows on the cozening blast and dreams of devils and distorted things and snakes coiled up that look like wedding rings and faded flowers that once were fit for wreaths in bygone summers and in perished springs there is a curse in every garden place and when at night the lily's holy face looks up to god it seems to chide me there the very sun with all his golden hair is ill at ease and birth and death of day bring no relief and darkly on my way my memory comes the ghost of my delight to fret and fume at woes it cannot slay oh bid me smile again as in the time when all the breezes seemed to make a chime and all the birds on all the woodland slopes had trills for me and seemed to guess the hopes that warmed my heart o thou whom i adore how proud were i though wounded bitter sore by shafts of doubt if in default of love i could but win thy friendship as of yore then were i blessed indeed and crowned of fate as kings are crowned as bards in their estate are rapture fraught re-risen above the dust then were i torture-proof and on the crust of one kind word though as a pittance thrown i'd live for weeks my tears i would disown and pray contented with my discontent as hermits pray when storms are overblown in the poem this recording is in the public domain Fourth Litany, Gratia Plina, by Eric McKay, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. O oh, smile on me, thou siren of my soul, that I may curb my thoughts to some control, and not offend thee, as in truth I do, morning and noon and night, when I pursue 
my vagrant fancies unallowed of thee but fraught with such consolement unto me as may be felt in homeward sailing ships when wind and wave contend upon the sea dower me with patience and imbue me still with some reminder when the night is chill of thy dear presence as in winter time the maiden moon that tenderly doth climb the lofty heavens hath yet a beam to spare for doleful wretches in their dungeon lair e'en thus endow me in my chamber dim with some reminder of thy face so fair quit thou thy body while thou sleepest well and visit mine at midnight by the spell that knows not shame for in the house of sleep all things are pure and in the silence deep i'll wait for thee and thou contrition wise wilt seek my couch and this that on it lies this frame of mine that lives for thee alone as palmers live for peace that never dies it were a goodly thing to spare a foe and kill his hate and i would e'en do so for i would kill the coyness of thy face i would enfold thee in my own spurned embrace and kiss the kiss that gladdens as with wine yea i would wrestle with those arms of thine and like a victor i would vanquish thee and tyrant like i teach thee to be mine for what is peace that we should cling thereto if war be wisest if the death we woo be fraught with fervour there's delight in death there is persuasion in the tempest's breath not known in calm in raptures round us flow when like an arrow through the bended bow of two fond lips the quivering dart of love brings down the kiss which saints shall not bestow the soldier dies for country and for kin he dies for fame that is so sweet to win and part for duty part for battle doom he wends his way to where the myrtles bloom he gains a grave perchance a recompense beyond his seeking and a restful sense of soul completion far from any strife and far from memory of his land's defence be this my meed to die for love of thee as when the sun goes down upon the sea and finds no mate in all the realms of earth i too have looked on nature in its worth and found no resting place in all the spheres and no relief beyond my sonnet tears the soul-fed shudderings of my lonely harp that knows the gamut now of all my fears i wear thy colours till the day i die a glove a ribbon and a rose thereby all joined in one i revel in these things for once an angel unarrayed in wings came to my side and beamed on me and said i love thee friend and then with lifted head gave me a rose on which the dew had fallen and like the flower she blushed a virgin red i found the glove down yonder in the dale i knew twas thine its colour creamy pale filled me with joy a prize i cried aloud and snatched it up as zealous then and proud as one who wins a knighthood in his youth and i was moved thereat in very sooth and kissed it off and called on kindly heaven to be the sponsor of mine amorous truth i earned the ribbon as we earn a smile for service done i help thee at the stile and so twas mine my trophy as of right oh never yet was ribbon half so bright it seemed of sky descent a strip of morn thrown on the sod a something summer worn to be my guerdon and enriched therewith i followed thee thy suitor through the corn i trod on air i seemed to hear the sound of fifes and trumpets and the quick rebound of bells unseen the storming of a tower by imps audacious and the sovereign power of some arch fairy thine acquaintance is sure in days gone by for all the land was pure 
as if new blessed the land and all the sea and all the welkin where the stars endure we journeyed on through fields that were aglow with cowslip buds and daisies white as snow and hand in hand we stood beside a shrine at which a bard whom lovers deemed divine laid down his life and as we gazed at this there seemed to issue from the woods abyss a sound of trills as if in its wild way a nightingale were pondering on a kiss a lane was reached that led i know not where unless to heaven for heaven was surely there and thou so near it and within a nook adown whose covertness a noisy brook did talk of peace i learnt of thee my fate the word of pity that was kin to hate the voice of reason that was reason's foe because it spurned the love that was so great but i must pause i must from day to day keep back my tears and seek a surer way than memory's track i must with lifted eyes reshape my life and heed the battle cries of prompt ambition and be braced to call to do such deeds as haply may befall if freed of thee and chartered to myself i may undo the bonds that now enthrall shall i do this i shall and thou shalt see signs of rebellion i will turn to thee and claim obedience i will make it plain how many a link may go to form a chain in each a circlet each a ring to wear i will extract the sting from my despair and toy therewith as with a charmed snake that lay me alike uprears itself in air or is my boast a vain an empty one and shall i rue it ere the day is done will hope revive betimes or must i stand for evermore outside the fairyland of thy good will alas my place is here to muse and moan and sigh and shed my tear my paltry tear for one who loves me not and would not mourn for me on my death bier oh get thee hence thou harbinger of light that like a dream dost come to me at night to haunt my sleep and rob me of content so true untrue so deaf to my lament i must forego the pride i felt therein ay get thee hence and i will crush the sin if sin it be that prompts me night and day to seek in thee the bliss i cannot win or if thou needs must haunt me after dark come when i wake the oriole and the lark are friends of thine and oft i know the thrush has trilled of thee at morn and even blush and flowers have made confessions unto me at which i marvel for they rail at thee and call thee heartless in thy seemlyhood though queen elect of all the flowers that be nay heed me not i rave i am possessed by utmost longing i am sore oppressed by thoughts of woe and in my heart i feel a something keener than the touch of steel as if to-day a danger unforeseen has tracked thy path as if my prayers had been misjudged in heaven or drowned in demon shouts beyond the boundaries of the coast terrene but this is clear this much at least is true i am thine own i dote upon the blue of thy kind eyes well knowing that in these are proofs of god when down upon my knees i fall subservient as a man in shame may own a fault i'll bite as with a flame i burn all day abashed and unforgiven and all unfit to touch the hand i claim end a poem this recording is in the public domain fifth litany salve regina by eric mckay read for librivox.org 
by larry wilson glory to thee my queen whom far away my thoughts aspire to as the birds of may aspire a mornings as in lonely nooks the gurgling murmurs of neglected brooks aspire to moonlight i as earth aspires when through the east alert with wild desires the rapturous sun surveys the welkin's height and flecks the world with witcheries of his fires oh i should curb my grief i should intone no plaint to thee no loss should i bemoan i should be patient i though full of care and not attempt by bias of prayer to sway thy spirit or to urge anew a claim contested for my days are few my days i think are few upon the earth since i must shun the joys i would pursue i am not worthy of the heaven i name when i name thee and yet to win the same is still my dream i strive as best i can to live uprightly on the vaunted plan of old world sages but i strive not well and thoughts conflicting which i cannot quell make me despondent and i quake thereat as the shuddering of a doomsday bell to die for thee were more than my desert to live for thee to keep thee out of hurt and like a slave to wait upon thy will were more than fame and lo i nourish still a sense of calm to feel that thou at least art sorrow free and honoured at the feast which nature spreads for all contented minds and that for thee its splendours have increased i stand alone i stand beneath the trees i guess their thoughts i hear them to the breeze say tender nothings and i dream the while of thy white arms and thy remembered smile when in a spot like this a year agone i saw thee stoop to pluck from off the lawn a wounded bird that peered into thy face as if it took thee for the nymph of dawn oh can it be as friends of thine affirm that thou art a fairy that from term to term month after month beloved of all good things thou art seen in forest and in meadow rings girt for the dance or like an oread queen arrayed for council for the woods convene their dryad forces when the nights are clear and nymphs and fawns carouse upon the green the crescent moon the argosy of heaven veers for the west across the pleiades seven and out beyond the ridge of charles wayne it seems to come to mooring on the main of that deep sky as if awaiting there an angel guest with sunlight in her hair a seraph's cousin or the foster child of some centurion of the upper air is it thy soul has cynthia called for thee in her white boat to take thee o'er the sea where suns and stars and constellations bright are isles of glory where a seraph's right surpasses mine and makes me seem indeed a base intruder with a coward's creed and not an angel's though a christian born and pledged always to serve thee at thy need thou art sleeping now and in thy snowy rest in that seclusion which is like a nest for blameless human maids beheld of those who come from god thou hast in thy repose no thought of me no thought of pairing time for thou art the sworn opponent of the rhyme that lovers make in kissing and anon my very love will vex thee like a crime but day and night and winter tide and spring change at thy voice and when i hear thee sing i know it tis may and when i see thy face i know tis summer thou art the youngest grace and all the muses praise thee evermore and there are birds who name thee as they soar and some of these the best and brightest ones have guessed the pangs that pierce me to the core thou art the month of may with all its nights and all its days transfigured in the lights of love lit smiles and glances multiform and like a lark that sings above a storm thy voice o'errides the tumult of my mind oh give me back the peace i strove to find in my last prayer and i'll believe that hope will dry anon the tears that make it blind there's none like thee not one in all the world no face so fair no smile so sweet impearled and no such music on the hills and plains 
as thy young voice whereof the thrill remains for hours and hours be like to keep alive the sense of beauty that the flowers may thrive or is it thy wish that birds should fly to thee before the days of april's quest arrive thou art noble natured and there's none to stand so meek as thou or with so dear a hand to ward off wrong for psyche of the greeks is dead and gone and eros with his freaks has bowed to thee and turned aside for shame his useless shaft not daring to proclaim his amorous laws and thou so maiden coy beneath the halo of thy spotless name but dreams are idle and i must forget all that they tend to i must cease to fret moth as i am for stars beyond the reach of mine up soaring and in milder speech i must invoke thy blessing on the road that lies before me far from thine abode and far from all persuasion that again thou wilt accept the terms of my love code o oh, sweet forgive me that from day to day i dream such dreams and teach me how to sway my fluttering self that in forsaken hours i may be valiant and eschew the powers of death and doubt i need the certitude of thine esteem that i may check the feud of mine own thoughts that rend and anger me because denied the boon for which i sued teach me to wait with patience for a word and be the sight of thee no more deferred than one uprising of the vesper star that waits on dian when supreme afar she eyes the sunset and of this be sure as i'm a man and thou a maid demure thou shalt be taken aside and wondered at before the gloaming leaves the land obscure thou shalt be bowed as we bow to saints in windowed shrines and far from all attaints of ribald passion thou as seemeth good wilt smile serenely in thy virginhood nor shall i know of mine own poor accord which thing in all the world is best to hoard or which is worst of all things that slay a woman's beauty or a soldier's sword i grieve in sleep i pine away at night i wake uncared for in the morning light and hour by hour i marvel that for me the wandering wind should make its minstrelsy so sweet and calm i marvel that the sun so round and red with all his hair undone should smile at me and yet begrudge me still the sight of thee that art my worshipped one i count my moments as a cloistered man may count his beads and through the weary span of each long day i peer into my heart for hints of comfort and i find in part a self-committal and a glimpse withal of some new menace in the rise and fall of days and nights that are the test of time though fate would make a mockery of them all there's a disaster worse than loss of gold worse than remorse and worse a thousandfold than pangs of hunger tis the thirst of love the rage and rapture of the ravening dove we name desire ah pardon i offend my fervour blinds me to the withering end of all good counsel and a curse thereby i vaunt anew the faults i cannot mend end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Sixth Litany Benedicta II by Eric McKay Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo I tell thee, sweet, there lives not on the earth A love like mine in all the height and girth And all the vast completion of the sphere i should be proud to-day to shed a tear if i could weep but tears are most denied when most besought and joys are sanctified by joys undoing in this world of ours from dusk to dawn in dawn to eventide wert thou a marble maid and i endowed with power to move thee from thy seeming shroud of frozen splendour all thy whiteness mine in all the glamour all the tender shine of thy glad eyes ah god if this were so and i the loosener and the summer glow of thy long tresses i were licensed then 
to gaze unchidden on thy limbs of snow i would prepare for thee a holy niche in some new temple and with draperies rich and flowers and lamps and incense of the best i would with something of mine own unrest imbue thy blood and prompt thee to be just i would endow thee with a fairer trust than mere contentment and a dearer joy than mere revulsion from the sins of dust a band of boys with psaltery and with lyre and cyprian girls the slaves of thy desire would chant and pray and raise so wild a storm of golden notes around thy sculptured form that saints would hear the chorus up in heaven and intermingle with their holy steven the sighs of earth and long for other cares than those ordained them by the lord's eleven i would approach thee with the master's tread and claim thy hand and have the service read by youthful priests resplendent every one and in thy frame the blood of thee would run as warm and sound as wine of syracuse and all that day the birds would bear the news in far directions and the meadow flowers would dream thereof love laden in the dews then by magnetic force the greatest known beside the tomb i would athwart the stone of thy white body in a trice of time call forth thy soul and woo thee to the chime of tinkling bells and make thee half afraid and half aggrieved to find thyself arrayed in such enthrallment and in such attire in sight of one whose will should not be stayed and like pygmalion i would claim anon a bride's submission and my talk thereon would not perplex thee for the sense of life would warm thy heart and urge thee to the strife of lip with lip and kiss with pulsing kiss which gives the clue to all we know of bliss and all we know of heights we long to climb beyond the boundaries of the grave's abyss the dear old deed chivalrous once again would find fulfilment and the curse of cain which fell on woman as on men it fell would fly from us as at a sorcerer's spell and leave us wiser than the sophist star who loved not folly night should not debar nor day dissuade us from those ecstasies that have anacreon's fame for guiding star ay thou wouldst kneel and seek in me apace a transient shelter for thine amorous face which then i'd screen and thou to me wouldst turn with awe-struck eyes and cling to me and yearn with sighs full tender and a touch of fear and like a bird which knows that spring is near and after spring the summer of sweet days thou wouldst attune thy love notes in mine ear or fraught with feelings near akin to hate thou wouldst denounce me and like one elate thou wouldst entwine me in thine arms so white as soldier nymphs with rapt and raging sight made war with spearsmen in the vales of song the vales of sparta where for right or wrong the gods were potent and for beauty's sake upheld the tourneys of their fair and strong i would not seem too wilful in the heat of our encounter or with sighs repeat too fierce a vow i would throughout confess thy murderous mirth thy conquering loveliness and then subdue thee tears would not avail nor prayer nor praise and flushed the while or pale thou shouldst be mine my hostage in the night without the option of a moment's bail thou shouldst be mine my hopes from first to last would win their way and lithe and love aghast and all unnerved thou wouldst as in a dream entreat my pardon i would callous seem to thine out yearning i would cast on thee a questioning look and then upon my knee i would surrender to that face of thine 
which is the great world's wonder unto me o oh, heaven could this be done and i fulfill one half my wish and curb thee to my will i were a prompter and a prouder man than earth has known since light-foot lovers ran for atlanta loved of men and boys i were a kaiser then a king of joys and fit to play with high begotten pomps as children play with pebbles or with toys o oh, golden hair o oh, gladness of an hour made flesh and blood o oh, beauteous human flower too sweet to pluck and yet though seeming cold ordained to love i pray thee as of old be kind to me i saw thee yesternight and for an instant i was urged to plight my troth again for in thy face i saw what seemed a smile evoked for my delight regrant thy favour take me by the hand and lead me back again to thine own land the nook supreme the sanctum in the glen where pixies walk unknown to peevish men and shrew like women whom no faith uplifts show me the place where nature keeps the gifts she most approves and where the songbirds dwell and i'll forego the land of little thrifts the moon is mother and the sun is sire of those young planets which with infant fire have late been found in regions too remote for quicklier search and these in time will dote and whirl and wanton in the realm of space for there are comets in the nightly chase who see strange things untalked of by the bards and earth herself has found a trysting place and so tis clear that sun and moon and stars are linked by love the marriage feast of mars was fixed long since tis venus whom he weds tis she alone for whom he gaily treads his path of splendour and of saturn's ring he knows the symbol and will have in spring a night betrothal near the southern cross and all the stars will pause thereat and sing what wonder then what wonder if to-day i too assert my right in roundelay to talk of rings and posies and the vows that wait on marriage tis the wild carouse of soul with soul athwart the sense of touch tis this uplifts us when with fever clutch the world would claim us and our hopes revive in spite of fears that daunt to us overmuch lips may be coy but eyes are quick at times to note the throbbings that are hot as crimes and fond as flutterings of the wings of doves for he is blind indeed who when he loves doubts all he sees the flickering of a smile the parthian glance the nod that for a while outbids elysium and is half a jest and half a truth to tempt us and beguile thine eyes have told me things i dare not speak and i will trust the track they bid me seek yea though it lead me to the gates of death the wind is labouring it is out of breath belike for scampering up the hill so fast to say all's well with thee and down the blast i seem to hear the sounds of serenades that swell from out the song fields of the past end a poem this recording is in the public domain seventh litany stella matutina by eric mckay read for librivox dot org by larry wilson arise fair phoebus and with look serene survey the world which late the orbed queen did pave with pearl to please enamoured swains arise arise the dark is bound in chains and thou art immortal and thy throne is here to sway the seasons and to make it clear how much we need thee o thou silent god thou art the crowned controller of the year and while the breezes reconstruct for thee the shimmering clouds 
and while from lee to lee the great earth reddens with a maid's delight behold i bring to thee as yesternight my subject song do thou protect apace my peerless one my peri with the face that is a marvel to the minds of men and like a flower for humbleness of grace the earth which loves thee or much have i erred the glad green earth which waits as for a word the sound of thee up shuddering through the morn and restive earth is pleased when day is born and soon will take each separate silent beam as proof of sex exulting in the dream of joys to come and quickened and convulsed year after year by love's triumphant theme a thousand times the flowers in all the fields will bow to thee and with their little shields the daisy folk will muster on the plain a thousand songs the birds will sing again as sweet to hear as quiverings of a lute and she i love will sing for thy repute full many a song she sings when she but speaks and when she's near the birds should all be mute o my beloved from thy curtained bed arise rejoice uplift thy golden head and be an instant while i muse on this as nude as statues and as good to kiss as dear saint agnes when she met her death unclad and pure and patient of her breath and with the grace of god for wedding gown as many an ancient story witnesseth the bath the plunge the combing of the hair all this i view a sight beyond compare since daphne died in all the varied charms of her chaste body rounded regal arms and shapes supreme too fair for human gaze but not too fair to win the mirror's praise that throbs to see thee in thy deshabille and loves thee well through all the nights and days i see thee thus in fancy as in books a man may see the naiads of the brooks as one entranced by potions aptly given may see the angels where they walk in heaven and may not greet them in their high estate for who shall guess the riddle wrought of fate till he be dead and who that lives a span shall thwart the future where it lies in wait and now to-day a word i dare not write starts to my lips as when a baffled knight withholds a song which fain he would repeat for lo the sense thereof is passing sweet and like a cup that's full my heart is filled with new desires and quiverings new distilled from old delights and all my pulses throb as at the touch of dreams divinely willed who talks of comfort when he sees thee not and feels no fragrance of the happy lot which violets feel when called upon to lie on thy white breast and who with amorous eye looks at the dear tomb of the shuddering flowers the twofold tomb where daintily for hours they droop and muse who looks i say at these and will not own the witchery of thy powers who speaks of glory and the force of love and thou not near my maiden-minded dove with all thy coyness all the beauty sheen of thy rapt face a fearless virgin queen a queen of peace art thou and on thy head the golden light of all thy hair is shed most nimbus like and most suggestive too of youthful saints enshrined and garlanded thou art nature's own and when a word of thine rings on the air and when the voice divine we call the lark up floats amid the blue i know not which is which for both are true both meant for heaven though fostered here below and when the silences around me flow i think of lilies and the face of thee which hath compelled my manhood's overthrow o blue-eyed rapture with the radiant locks o thou for whom athwart the fever shocks of life and death and misery and much sin i sell salvation there's a prize to win and thou art its voucher there's a wonder prize unknown till now beneath the vaulted skies and thou art its symbol thou art its essence fair its full completion formed adoring wise yes i will tell thee how i love thee best and all my thoughts of thee shall be confessed and none withheld not e'en the witless one which late i harbored when the mounting sun burst from a cloud the moon a mile away as if in hiding from the lord of day as if at times the moon were like thyself 
and feared the semblance of a master sway i love thee dearly when thine eyes are dim with unshed tears for then they seem to swim in liquid blessedness and unto me there comes the memory of a god's decree which said of old be all men evermore all men and maids whose hearts are passion sore acclaimed in heaven and all day long i muse on hopes divine and deathless prophet lore i love thee when the soft enduring flush invades thy face and dimples in the blush bespeak attention as a rose pout absorbs the stillness when the sun is out and all the air retains the glow thereof in all the world there is not light enough nor sheen enough all day nor any warmth till thou be near me armed with some rebuff and how i love thee when thy startled eyes look out at me enwrapped in that surprise which marks an epoch in the life i lead as if they guessed the scope of eros creed and all the mirth and malice of his wiles for it is wondrous when my lady smiles and all the ground is holy where she treads and all the air is thrilled for many miles in every mood of thine thou art my joy and day by day to shield thee from annoy i do the deeds that slaves were bound unto with stabs for payment shuddering through and through with their much labor and i deem it grand to die for thee if after touch of hand i might but kiss thee as a lover doth for i should then be king of all the land but father time old time with janus face looks o'er the sphere and sees no fitting place for thine acceptance for the thrones of earth are much too mean and in thy maiden worth thou'rt crowned enough and throned in very sooth more than the queens who lord it in their youth or men's convictions and he names thy name as one beloved of nature and of truth he sees the nights he sees the veering days the sweet spring season with its hymn of praise the summer frondage proud the autumn pale the winter worn with withering of the gale all this he sees and now to-day in june he too recalls that rapturous afternoon when all the fields and flowers were like a dream and all the winds the offshoot of a tune so i will cease to clamour for the past and seek suspension of my doubts at last in some new way till fate becomes my friend i will regain the right to redefend the love i bear to thee for good or ill for though tis said our griefs have power to kill mine let me live in mine unworthiness that spurned of thee my lips may praise thee still end a poem this recording is in the public domain eighth litany domina exaudi by eric mckay read for librivox dot org by nemo it seems a year and more since last we met since roseate spring repaid in part its debt to thy bright eyes and o'er the low lands fair may daffodils so like thy golden hair that i poor wretch have kissed them on my knees forget me nots peep out beneath the trees so like thine eyes that i have questioned them and thought thee near though viewless on the breeze it seems a year and yet when all is told tis but a week since i was re-enrolled among thy friends how fairy like the scene how gay with lamps how fraught with tender sheen of life and languor i was thine alone alert for thee intent to catch the tone of thy sweet voice and proud to be alive to call to heart a peace for ever flown had i not vexed thee as a monk in prayer may vex a saint by musing unaware on evil things a saint is hard to move and quick to chide and slow as i can prove to do what's just and yet in thy despite we met again we two at dead of night when i was hopeful in my love of thee and thou superb and matchless in the light 
i felt distraught from gazing overmuch at thy great beauty and i feared to touch the dainty hand which envy self had praised i feared to greet thee and my soul was dazed and self-convicted in its new design for i was mad to hope to call thee mine ay mad is he who claims a virgin's love because his lips have praised her at a shrine i saw thee there in all the proud array of thy young charms as if a summer's day had leapt to life and made itself a queen as if the sylphs remembering what had been had missioned thee from out the world's romance to stir my pulse and thrill me with a glance and once again aloud though undesired i did become thy partner in the dance i bowed to thee i drew thee to my side as one may seize a wrestler in his pride to try conclusions and i felt the rush of my heart's blood suffuse me in a blush that told its tale but what my tongue would tell was spent in sighs as o'er my spirit fell the silvery cadence of thy lips assent and every look o'er ruled me like a spell o oh, devil's joy of dancing when a tune speeds us to heaven and night is at the noon of all its frolic all its wild desire o oh, thrall of rapt illusions when we tire of coy reserve in all the moments pass is past the visions in a magic glass in every step is shod with ecstasy and every smile is flecked with some alas was it a moment or merry span of years uncounted when convulsion ran right through the veins of me to make me blessed and yet accursed in that revolving quest known as a waltz if waltz indeed it were not a fluttering dream of gauze and ver and languorous eyes i scarce can muse thereon without a pang too sweet for me to bear by right of music for a fleeting term mine arms enwound thee and i held thee firm there on my breast so near yet so remote so close about me that i seemed to float in sunlit rapture touched i know not how by some suggestion of a deeper vow that men are aware of when on glory's track they kneel to angels with uplifted brow and lo abashed i do recall to mind all that is past the yearning undefined the balked confession that was like a sob the sound of singing and the gurgling throb of lute and viol meant for many things but most for misery and a something clings close to my heart that is not wantonness though wanton like it warms me while it stings the night returns that night of all the nights and i am dowered anew with such delights as memory feeds on for i walked with thee in moonlit gardens and there flew to me a flower like moth a pinioned daffodil from nature's hand and out beyond the hill their rose star i joyed to look upon because it seemed the star of thy good will we sat beneath the trees as well thou knowst within an arbor which a summer's boast had made ambrosial and we loitered there some little space the while upon the air uprose the fragrance of uncounted flowers ah me how weird a tryst was that of ours and how the moon looked down so lurid warm athwart the stillness of the frondage towers i seemed to feel thy breath upon my cheek i vainly searched for words i longed to speak but could not utter lest the sound thereof should scare away the elves that wait on love when i spoke to thee twas of the spot where we were seated things that mattered not uncared for things the weather the new laws and sudden loud the wind assailed the grot a little bird was warbling overhead 
as if to twit me with a word unsaid which he more daring when the sun was high trilled to his mate he knew the tender why of many a pleading and he knew me seems the very keynote to the lyric dreams of all true poets when by love impelled they search the secrets of the woods and streams to sure that summer when she reared the bower and arched the roof and gave it all the dower of all its leaves and all the crannies small where wrens looked through to sure that after all summer was kind and meant to make for me a shriving place a lighthouse on the sea of all that verdure that beneath the stars i might receive one quickening glance from thee oh had i dared to whisper in thine ear my heartful wish undaunted by the fear of some rebuke a flush of thy fair face a lifted hand to tell me that the place was fairy fenced and guarded as by flame oh had i dared to court the world of blame that's good for me no doubt at every turn my life to-day were chastened by the same but i was conscious of a sudden ban hurled from the zenith i was like the man who scaled olympus with intent to bring new fire therefrom and dared not face the king of thought and thunder i was full prepared for thy displeasure for the pass was bared to mine unlooking and with faltering tongue i left my languorous meanings undeclared o oh, lost occasion what a thing art thou a threefold key the when the where the how the past the present and the future tense all thrown aside for what a witless sense of some compunction when the hour is bold reason is shy and rapture seeming cold makes mute surrender of its dearest chance in all for fear of doubts that might be told but could we meet oh could we meet again on some such night unseen upon the plain i'd rob thee lady of a tardy smile i would do this and for a breathing while i would assert a sinner's right to pray a sinner's right to choose as best he may his patron saint and i would kneel to thee and call thee mine and dote on thee for a and then in summer when the hours are mad and all the flowerets in the fields are glad and all the breezes like demented things outspeed the birds with sunlight on their wings in summer a in summer's gracious time i might perchance be pardoned for the crime of my much love and win thy benison ere yet the year has reached its golden prime end of poem this recording is in the public domain ninth litany lilium interspinus by eric mckay read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson dearest and best of maidens whom the fates have dowered with beauty whom the glory gates have shown so splendid in my waking sight is dwell thy siren thus to haunt the night and grant no mercy none from week to week all through the year is it well my soul to seek and shun my body is it throughout ordained that thou shouldst spurn a love so tender me it is my joy to serve thee tis my pride to own my follies though anew denied the chance of wisdom and for this who knows i shall be counted ere the seasons close a time perverter yes i shall be shamed and frowned upon and day by day proclaim a foe to virtue though in seeking thee i seek the goal that virtue's self hath named o lily mine o lily tipped with gold and welkin eyed for angels to behold when down on earth is it well to stand apart and gaze at me and gently break my heart without one word is it well to seem always so grieved to see me when at fall of day thou dost accept the reverence of mine eyes but not the homage that my lips would pay oh give me back again at midnight hour 
as in the circuit of that starlit bower the right to talk with thee and be thy friend the right in some wild way to make an end of my submission or to re-bestow my troth on thee despite the overthrow of all my dreams that were my constant care though less to thee than flakes of alien snow i will unveil my meanings one by one and tell thee why the bird that loves the sun loves not the moon though conscious of her fame for he's the soul of truth in his acclaim and knows not treason and of like intent are all my yearnings too when i lament and though i say it there's no troubadour has loved as i since cupid's bow is bent i have been wed in sleep and thou hast been mine own true bride the swooning summer queen of my heart throbs i have been wed in jest i have been taken wildly to thy breast and then repelled and made to feel the ire of eager eyes that have the strange desire to rack my soul a tremble in the dark but not the will to aid me to aspire i should have died the instant that i heard thy whispered vow in slumber when a word made me thy master for did i receive thy full surrender and i'll not believe that all was false or that my dreaming power was given for naught the future may devour the facts of earth but not its fantasies and not the dreams we dream from hour to hour oh thou'lt confess that love from man to maid is more than kingdoms more than light and shade in sky-built gardens where the minstrels dwell and more than ransom from the bonds of hell thou wilt i say admit the truth of this and half relent that shrinking from a kiss thou didst consign me to mine own disdain athwart the rapture of visioned bliss i'll seek no joy that is not linked with thine no touch of hope no taste of holy wine and after death no home in any star that is not shared by thee supreme afar and here thou'rt first and foremost of all things glory is thine and gladness and the wings that wait on thought when in thy spirit's way thou dost invest a realm unknown to kings i will accept of thee a poison bowl and drink the dregs thereof i to the soul and sound thy praises with my latest breath i was a pilgrim bound for nazareth but when i knew thee when i touched thy hand i changed my purpose and to-day i stand thine amorous vassal though denounced afresh and warned away unkissed from edenland o oh, flower unequalled here from morn to morn is it well bethink thee with a rose's thorn to deck thyself thy lily and to seem so irresponsive to my passion dream it's a caprice of thine to look so proud and so severe athwart the shining cloud of thy long hair and shall i never learn how least to grieve thee when my vows are vowed the full perfection of thy face is such that like a child's it seems to know the touch of some glad hour that god has smiled upon there is a whiteness whiter than the swan a singing sweeter than the linnet's note but there is nothing whiter than thy throat and nothing sweeter than thy tender voice when love attuned it skyward seems to float lily and rose in one to find thy peer exceeds belief all through the varying year for chance thereof and hope thereof is none there comes no rival to the rising sun and none to thee no rival to the moon that sets in venice on the far lagoon and none to thee thou marvel of the months thou art thy cynosure of night and noon yes i will hope i will not cease to turn my thoughts to thee and cry to thee and yearn as one in hell may lift enamoured eyes to some sweet soul beyond the central skies whose face has slain him for tis true i swear i have been murdered by thy golden hair and by the brightness of those fringed orbs that are at once my joy and my despair winter is wild but spring will come again for there's compunction in the fever pain that earth endures when clamorous down the steep the wind outblows the curse it cannot keep and so belike thy scorn of me may change to something fairer than the fated range of dole and doubt and pity and reproof 
and then my sighs may cease to seem so strange for thou and i will meet and not be foes e'en as the rue may stand beside the rose and not affront it as a lonely tree may guard a shrine and not upon the lee be deemed obtrusive as an errant knight may serve the sovereign of his soul's delight and not thereby be deemed of less account than he who keeps her daily in his sight reject me not that in the world of men among the wielders of the sword and pen i have as twere detractors by the score reject me not for faults that i deplore and fain would alter though if i were wise i'd blunt the edge thereof in some disguise approved of thee for i've a kind of hope that we'll be friends again ere summer dies if this be true i'll greet thee with such fire that thou wilt throb thereat as throbs a lyre and give thine answer too without restraint and neither frown at me nor fear a taint in my much zeal that knows not any pause but night and day is constant to the laws of its own making and is fain to prove how leagued it is throughout to honour's cause i will conceal from thee no thought of mine all will be clear as signing of a sign on marriage scripts and though i tell thee so the seas and streams of earth shall cease to flow ere thou shalt find in this world or the next a love so proud a faith so firmly sexed as this of mine for thou art the polar star to which i turn as minstrel to his text but woe's the hour my heart is wounded sore and soon may cease to take as heretofore such keen delight in tears that comfort not but evermore do seem to leave a blot on sorrow's teaching shall i muse thereon one season more till hope and faith be gone or must i look for comfort up in heaven and then be slain by thee as night by dawn end of poem this recording is in the public domain tenth litany gloria in excelsis by eric mckay read for LibriVox org by nemo o love o lustre of the sunlit earth that knows thy step and revels in the worth of thy much beauty is thy will anew framed as thou art to marvel that i sue with such persistence and in such unrest amid the frenzies of my passion quest wilt look ungently and without a tear on all the pangs i bear at thy behest morning and eve i cease not when i kneel to my redeemer for my spirit's weal and for my body's as becomes a man morning and eve i cease not in the span of all my days o thou unconquered one to pray for thee and do what may be done to reacquire the friendship i have lost which is the holiest thing beneath the sun for what is fame that with so loud a voice or sways the nations what the random choice of sight and sound which makes the place we fill so fraught with good so redolent of ill where is the thunderstorm of yesternight that shook the clouds and where the leaven's blight that spake of chaos in the judgment day and where the wisdom of a king's delight could i be kissed of thee or crowned of men i'd choose the kiss i'd be ordained then lord of myself and not the slave i seem to each new doubt our tryst was like a dream yet was true for oft by wonder chance we find the path to many a bright romance and many a tilt and tourney of dear love in which the brave are vanquished by a glance to lie alone with thee one little hour and cling to thee as flower may cling to flower with no rough thought beyond the peace thereof to be thy comrade and to don and doff the little chain that hangs about thy neck to do all this my fair one and to fleck thine eyes with kisses were a righteous deed and not a thing for love to hold in check nay there are dimples which i long to taste and there is a girdle fit for phoebe's waist which i would loosen 
for i have the skill to handle lilies and by venus's will i'd handle thee and comfort thee therein for love's a sacrament i'd die to win and not a toy nor yet a subterfuge and not a pitfall for the feet of sin the searching suddenness of thy blue eyes the flash thereof the fire that in them lies all this i yearn to all the soul of thee shone in thy looks as though to solace me in some disaster portioned out as mine where thou abidest where thy limbs recline where thou art absorbed in silence or in prayer there stands a throne there gleams a fairy shrine i am indeed more subject to thy sway than trees are subject in their tender way to earth's great king revolving round the sphere i am thy suffering servant all the year and when i wake thy name is on my lips and when i sleep i feel thy finger-tips pressed on mine eyes as if thy wraith were there to save my soul from night's entire eclipse till i have heard from thee my doom of death i shall be proud to serve thee with my breath and with my labour and be thine withal as man is god's content with any thrall that's bound in thee content with any lot that's linked with thine in some secluded spot which thou hast loved o lady in the past and where remorse and wrong will find us not to know thee fair ah god how sweet is this to find thee wavering and to grasp in bliss only the dream of thee how sad the while and yet by reason of a moment's smile how grand to hope how gracious to forget thou false to me thou heedless of a debt of love's incurring nay by juno's crown thy snow-white hand shall be my gird on yet the spirit love that leads us to the soul athwart the body as its fairest goal the love that lives in languor undefined and yet is strong the love that can be kind and yet aggressive as a soldier's blade keen to the hilt entranced and not afraid this is the love that will survive the death of all endowments which the years have made wilt frown at this wilt chide me wilt appeal as some are wont when lovers out of zeal or step the bounds of wisdom which hath ceased to win men's praise the matins of the east sung by the lark the credo of the cloud which oft he sings in confirmation proud of his great love all this were mine excuse if i could sing as he so dawn endowed for i'd be welcome then where'er thou art and gladden thee and play as prompt a part as romeo played with juliet at his breast who loves not love who hates to be caressed is nature's bane and i'll denounce him too for he's a foe to all that's just and true in earth and heaven and when he seeks a joy his quest shall fail his hand shall miss the clue we know these things we know how dark a word may let in light and how the smallest bird may mix the morn of music till we think the fire-lit air is wine for us to drink and every drop salvation every sound amuses whisper all the flowerful ground a fancy carpet fit for knights to tread when on their way to arthur's table round a peevish fool is he who will not raise his hands in prayer among the danger days that come to all for he when waxen old will search the past and find it callous cold and all the future too will freeze for him nor shall he weep aright when tears bedim his desperate doleful eyes that know not faith and he shall hear no chance of cherubim i was bewitched of late my soul had met some fearful doom and there had dropped a threat a curse belike from lips of atropos there had been done a deed of spirit loss which did o'erwhelm me as i paused thereat but now tis shunned and where a tremor sat now sits a hope and where a gulf was seen now stands a mount as blest as ararat 
the rose is silent and the lily dumb for man alone he sees them when they come glad from the soil but what they mean thereby and what they dream of when they front the sky eludes his learning but the birds can tell moths talk to flowers and breezes in the dell hear more confessions than we men reveal and oaks and cedars love each other well in woodland places where the grass is lit with lamp-like flowers i seem to see thee flit on azure wings as if to bless the glade for everywhere they form and shine in shade doth come and go conversant as i deem with nature's whims for thou art of great esteem in fairy haunts and elves and fays confess how sweet thou art my love and how supreme diana's self was not more virgin proud the maiden moon new seated on a cloud that seems her throne where she receives the stars the moon who holds her court beyond the jars of land and sea the moon the vestal moon has kept thee cold since the transcendent noon of that wild day when i thy hand did claim and when thy lips refused me their boon but thoughts are free and mine have found at last their absolution and from out the past there seems to shine as twere a beacon fire and all the land is lit with large desire of lambent glory all the quivering sea is big with waves that wait the morn's decree as i thy vassal wait thy beckoning smile athwart the splendors of my dreams of thee amen end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of a lover's litanies by eric mckay